I think that people talk a lot about the way that there's like a lot of unrealistic body expectations in girls. But I think the same thing happens to guys and it probably doesn't happen at the same rate, but it does happen a lot. I bet you don't even realize the impact that social media has on your perception of the world and how uh -oh. you see it on a daily basis. From what we eat, how we see our bodies, our sex lives, unreal expectations, and even the chances of being bitten by a shark in the sea next time you visit Australia. According to social media, has Buller and I are secretly best friends. Mm. I'm going to explain the six biggest issues that I see when it comes to social media and some of the things that we can do proactively to stop them ruining our lives. Okay. Number one orthorexia. Although this has been going on for many years, 2023 saw Liver King explode to socials. Ooh. He was claiming Natty's status <coughs> and his principles were the nine ancestral tenants, oh, we which I'm sure him. had good meaning. But it turned out that Liver King, Brian Johnson, was a lying piece of shit. He Behind sure his multi-million dollar empire based on improving lives with supplementation regimes was excessive steroid and growth hormone use, which yep. actually borderlines more of abuse. In a bid to grow his yeah. business to the largest possible heights, he had to deceive millions of people to get there. 2024 saw a brand new meme page, Eddie Abu. Like Liver King, people flock. Yeah, I, I hate that kind of stuff because like, if you're selling a, it's like a, you ever seen the, I'm trying to think like, okay, so it's a guy that's saying like, yeah, well, how I became a vice president, the youngest vice president at my company. And it's like, oh, I get up at five in the morning. You know, I work out before the sun comes up. I make sure to eat, you know, Cheerios with no milk. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I do a couple of other stupid fucking things. I, I do like a therapy meditation. And then finally, my dad owns the company. I see. Okay. All right. I get it. Yeah. I think it's the same thing with Liver King. You're not talking about this kind of stuff. It's the same thing with like Dan Blitzarian. You know, the guy, he's like, oh, yeah, I, like, won all this money in poker. And then you find out his dad was a con man. And he had a bunch of money. The dad actually went to jail. People lack critical thinking? Well, they also... They, no, it's not that they lack critical thinking. They're being lied to. They're not stupid for being lied to. ...to something that must be novel, that must be superior to just exercising more and having a yeah. more balanced diet. The more crazy, the more insane the character is the more we just cannot resist flocking to that rather than just sensible advice that's backed by science and in the space of a year well, the we reason went why people don't want to do scientific advice is because oftentimes scientific advice is harder to follow that's the thing it's like you know would you rather take the dr oz weight loss pill where you can eat cupcakes and lose 25 pounds off of your waistline or do you want to have to go to the gym every day and exercise? Well, there's a reason why Dr. Oz is on the front of every fucking health magazine. From eating testicles and living primal to labeling the majority of foods as shit and abolishing anything that isn't meat and eggs as being terrible for your health. You may even recall that Eddie Abu recently said that if you're depressed, it's because of your diet. So if you're out there on antidepressants and you're thinking about ending it all, just I think that there's probably some people that if they had a better diet, they wouldn't be depressed as much. And like, that's, I think the problem with some of the messaging is that the messaging is given in a way that's 10% true. And the 10% true is what people use to argue it for being 100% true. That's the issue is that it, there's like, there's no context or, you know, like, a, you know, there's no contextualization provided. Meat and eggs, according to Eddie, depression is all diet based. Not yeah. only that, you'll also recall that last week Eddie made a point that you shouldn't be tired in your 20s. So for any of you nope. NHS workers that are doing night shifts and doing 18 hour days, just eat better, you idiots. Yep. Thanks, Eddie. Carnivores have actually been doing this for years. And that's, again, but another example of something that's true 10 percent, maybe even 20, 30 percent. If you eat shitty food, you're probably going to feel shitty and you'll feel tired more often. But is that probably the reason that everybody's tired? No, it's not. Eddie's found a knack of doing it in a more viral it's hard way. To sell Eddie comes from a background of extreme drug abuse as a very high-end bodybuilder. Ooh. And I'll tip my hat to Eddie. And even though he was taking grams of gear a week and probably shortened his life by decades, he was good at that. But someone that bodybuilds to that level yeah. and gets in them skimpy underwear to tense on stage to Jesus. impress another bunch of blokes, they crave some sort of attention. So you must ask yourself, are these values that Eddie you know, purports True to his beliefs, or like Liver King, is this a ploy to grow his financial position to the best position possible? Because it's estimated that Eddie's making over 50,000 pounds a month educating people in subjects that are not backed by science. He even- Wow, $55,000 a month. That's a lot of fucking money. I think the problem isn't necessarily that, uh, that people are attention whores. It's that they're peddling information 
that is not accurate. Insists that the insulin hypothesis, which has been debunked a lot, numerous times with a plethora of studies, that insulin is the driver of weight gain and that if you want to lose weight, you need to control your insulin, not your calories. He debunks energy balance. He actually disputes that calories are not even a thing. Eddie goes head to head with thermodynamics and there are millions of people that back him because they're idiots. Now I get that Eddie's best. There it is. Yeah, it's just people are dumb as fuck. I do think that there should be a degree of accountability whenever somebody presents themselves as an authority on a subject that is medical or health based. I do think there, sh there should be accountability for that because you're presenting yourself as an expert. Teach is backed by well meaning, but so is Liver Kings. And I'm sure that thousands of lives, maybe even millions of lives, are better off with yeah. this content. They're probably eating better, they're probably having less ultra processed foods, which has always been the main principle of what I preach to improve your diet, exercise more, and lose fat. My Imagine biggest gripe that. with Eddie is this. He seems to say that diet is everything. But I would say mm -hmm. there are three tiers that we need to prioritize when it comes to improving our health. Cardiovascular fitness, the amount of fat we have, the quality of our diet. Whereas Eddie just focuses on one, sometimes when working with obese populations, getting them to change their diet is actually the hardest part. So getting them to reduce the amount of calories coming in, which can be done with a poor diet, will cause them to lose fat, yeah. which actually benefits their health. Also, we can improve their cardiovascular fitness. So there are two out of three means that we can improve someone's objective health markers without improving their diet. That's not to say I yeah. don't want to improve their diet, but we need to be nuanced and see what we can do with that client. Because everyone can eat healthy for two weeks and they go back to their old habits. Am yep. I right? Now, I know a lot of you are going to be in Eddie's defense, probably in the comments going, yeah, we know that Eddie can't really read or assess research papers or understand Ooh, literature. Yeah, but, but he's trying to save lives. He's doing this with people's best interests. No, he's not. He is trying to, he's trying to make money and saving lives is a secondary effect. He's trying to make money. Uh, now, obviously, if people view a, a value in that, that's up to them. But it's not. Yeah, he cares about money. That's the primary reason why he's doing it. If there wasn't money involved, he wouldn't be doing it. And if there were lives to be saved and no money, I don't think he would be. Or at least he certainly wouldn't be doing it as much. There's an extremely uh, small amount of actual hard science whenever it comes to nutrition, though. Yeah, I've seen a lot of studies that seem to be contradictory. I see that all the time. But what I do also see is that a lot of the people that I know that got a C in biology and couldn't figure out how to do chemistry at all in high school all have opinions about COVID. You don't even know what the periodic table is. So, yes, things are uncertain, but the people that are pushing these narratives don't have the institutional knowledge to even be able to contextualize that uncertainty. You understand? So even if they read a study, they don't understand what it really means. I completely agree. But if we are to stray away from objective truths in a bid to save lives, where does this end? Because if you support that notion, yeah. then that's just a bit like agreeing with what the governments did in the pandemic when they claimed vaccines were a lot more safe than they actually were because it was in a bid to save lives. If you can be dishonest, as long as people's yeah. best interests are at heart, where does that stop? You then open a door to a place that we don't want to go. So many of you are up in arms that the exactly. government lied to us in one hand whilst trying to protect us with the other. Yet when their favorite influencer goes into supermarkets and just makes stuff up, that's completely fine. Eddie's content yeah. actually used to be super reasonable. He's now a product of the people egging him on, pardon the pun. Here's a video of Eddie back in the day where he's a lot more sensible. Now when you got um, something like um, lentils, it's like getting protein out of bread. It's just pointless. His stances on things are a lot less polarizing and he's a lot yeah. actually closer to an evidence-based standpoint on nutrition but unfortunately this is what i think happens with a lot of people is that the internet narratives caricaturize people and to where people become more and more of a caricature of themselves and rather than just being authentic and normal because people get a re like the reason why this happens i think is because there's a reward structure that's built around overreacting and being extreme so mentally a person's personality shifts as they're constantly fed a reward structure of overreacting and being extreme and then being rewarded for it. Bang millions of views. The further you go from the objective truth, the easier it is to get people as part of your cult and therefore make lots of money from it. Look at the Mormons or Scientology. Pretty sure they make more money than Christianity and their story is whack. Which brings me on to number two, body image issues and the algorithm. Everyone nowadays wants to be a fitness influencer because it pays well and you can work remote from a laptop in Bali. But out of the tens of thousands of people doing it, only the most confident, best looking, best physiqued ones will stop you in your tracks. Your eyes may admire the male or female physiques, then boom, you are done. The algorithm then knows that you want to see more of that. The more younger, the more chiseled. Anyone not in that top 1% shape, you'll swipe past. I think a lot of the people that want to be content creators or whatever, 
don't actually put in the work to be a content creator. They do the part that they want to do, but being like a influencer for like fitness is probably hard to do in a lot of circumstances. But whenever a person who doesn't know anything about it sees that and they don't understand if it's hard or easy, all they see, it's like, oh, oh you just have to be hot and then people will watch your videos. There's a lot of really hot girls that get like 30 viewers. It's kind of crazy to me. And you see it all the time. So it's like, what really is the difference? It's the same as, oh, well, I wish I could be a streamer. I wish I could just turn on my PC and play video games and people would watch me. Well, nobody does that. That's not the way that it works. And that's the way that it's meant to seem like it works because people like the idea of an authentic, uh, casual experience with streaming. They don't want things to seem like a massive production. Like things like Dr. Disrespect is kind of an, a, an anomaly. Most live streams, the, the vibe is trying to reach an organic feel. It's trying to reach a casual, non-professional feel. So it would make sense that a good live stream that's very successful would look like it's just a guy playing video games. However, it's not. It, there's a lot more to it that goes into it. But people don't see that. Before you know, your feed is created with the best, at the top of the algorithm of these yeah. fittest, best looking babes. And every time you go on your phone, you just flocked and you can't stop looking at them. You try swiping away, but the algorithm knows what you're doing. Knows you like the babes. Sharing it into the boys group chat doesn't. What? Imagine if I was to get the top 10,000 business owners. And then I said, hey, let's, let's just go mingle with the top 50 of those. You'd then okay. feel that your own entrepreneurial talent was not even worth pursuing. But in any cohort of humans, if you look at the top 1%, you're going to feel damn depressed from it. You must realize yeah. every time you go on social media, you are skimming the top percentile of winners. It's not reality. It's not real this life. This is what happens with Twitch as well. I think this is how, um, how a lot of people do, is they see somebody like XQC or they see you know, like soda popping or a live streamer and they think, oh, wow, well, I can just go do this or every live streamer makes a bunch of money. Well, if you scroll down and it's actually so fast that you lose that option. So like if I go down and I look at this and I look at live channels, uh, let's just pull up a, a game like Elven Ring. I bet the people that are like, these are the people that are making a living on the game maybe this third row below this at 100 viewers these are people who are down bad they're probably not able to make a full living living streaming and the time that they take off of their career in order to pursue streaming assuming that their channel doesn't grow will be wasted time that will probably be held against them in the long term for their career and it will be an overall negative in their life and that's just the truth it's sad but it's the truth so whenever you look at a lot of these other streamers, you have to understand that many of them can't make a living streaming. And the only people that you see that are, are the ones that obviously you see the most of because they're the most popular. You see a lot of people like Jinxy, XQC, right? A lot of these guys, yeah, yeah, of course that people are watching them, of course. But this isn't the majority. You scroll all the way down and you're looking at the top percent of the top percent. Like there's how many streamers and you know, look at, uh, who, who is it here? Um, clicks, right? Let's look at clicks. Clicks is, let, let's just search it up just real quick, just so people can understand how extreme this example is. Clicks is ranked 68 on the entire platform. Out of every streamer on the entire platform, he is number 68. You see what I'm saying? People don't understand how much those extremes exist and how big they are, out of how many? Millions. At least hundreds of thousands. It's what not real life. Which brings me on to number three, dating. There's a fantastic guy called yeah. Rory Sutherland who did a podcast with Chris Williamson, mm -hmm. and he makes an exceptional point about recruiting, talent, and dating. And here's a clip of Rory Sutherland, by the way. Big credit to Modern Wisdom Podcast too. I know I'm business partner with Chris, but his guests have been exceptional recently. I don't think a still photograph and a few words of text uh, in any way a proxy for who you might forge a long-term relationship with. Rory makes fantastic point that when- Yeah, that's because people that are on those places that have a picture and a few lines of text aren't looking for, in a lot of cases, a long-term relationship. You're recruiting an HR department often so won't say. see anyone who on their CV doesn't have a two, one and above, which is a grade at university. And the issue sure. with that is, 
there is a lot of talent out there that just didn't want to go to university or that didn't yeah. get a 2-1, myself included. I flunked out in my first year because Ooh. I just hated it. doesn't mean I'm not intelligent or I'm not capable. My multiple businesses should be credit to that. Just because I don't want to sit in a room for an hour and a half and recite boring topics of medicine through time and scribble it on bits of paper doesn't mean I'm stupid. So it's kind of ridiculous. I think the best example of this is that I recently saw some guy and he was in a, like computer engineering and he went to like some hackathon and you know, he was like decent at school and he was going up against these guys that didn't go to school for it. They just do it all day, every day. And he was like, man, man, I suck. <laughs> like, I, oh, fuck. Like, I didn't even know how much this, like, yeah, I, I don't even know how to make a network. And it's like, what is this? I saw a tweet. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so like, I think that uh, computer science and programming is probably the best example of this where you have a lot of people that are self-taught and people that are like uh you know like very very good at programming and, and computer design and they never went to school for it now also by the way there are a lot of people who went to school for it and they're very good at it they're extremely good at it. they went to school for it they're really good at it then they got a job in it they're really good at it but there's also a lot of people that didn't that people hiring graduates for their first job would yeah. overlook the majority of people. Not to mention, the amount of men going to university is massively dropping. If you only set a 2-1 as a prerequisite uh -huh. for hiring, you're gonna leave a lot of talent on the table. And if all recruiters are all looking for the same 2-1 and above, loads of talent doesn't get a look in, the rest of the talent yeah. is all being fought over. And we see the same issues with dating. This is the same with um, rating and wow. If you know, everybody's looking at parses. There are some people that just do the fight and play correctly that get overlooked. It's true with WoW too. And this again is Rory's point. The same way that just setting a prerequisite for a 2-1 to hire someone for a job makes the same mistake as in dating apps, just using a picture and a bit of text to try and pick someone that's ideal for dating. Rory makes a fantastic point that Cameron Diaz and Jennifer yeah. Aniston wouldn't be supermodels. They just don't have the look, but because it's the way they move, it's the way they interact, it's the way they sound. It's seeing them on video that makes you realize their beauty. The same goes for that. different characters, different men, different women yeah. all over the world. People that look good in photos and people that look good in video are very different. And from my experience with That's dating, true. those that look best on the picture- Yeah, I've seen plenty of people. It's like, you see somebody online and they look one way, then you meet them in real life and they're like, damn, you don't look the same as you did on the, on the picture, on the computer. You look way different. Yeah, uh, like, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, there's a lot, a lot of people like that. Like, there's some people that I knew them online, I didn't even recognize them. Pictures look like a sack of potatoes in real life, and some that look like a sack of potatoes in the pictures turned out to be yeah. beautiful in real life. And if we rely on just And one of the reasons why that happens is, like, so a lot of people, um, like, the best example is people that have, like, a larger nose. So, like, if you have larger nose, uh, or larger nose, or, like, certain accentuated features on your face... You want to use a camera that doesn't draw attention to that. So, like, there's different lenses and the different aspect ratios of those lenses. And some cameras will make you look like a fucking, uh, like an idiot, right? But other ones won't. And it depends on what that camera lens is. Like, for example, like my camera lens right now makes me look like I look in the mirror generally, right? But is this the way I look in real life or in other pictures? Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. It depends on the camera. Media apps, we are like recruiters. We leave a lot of talent on the table. That's why the dating pool is so messed yeah. up. Rather than just meeting someone on a night out, having a few drinks and going, yeah, you're fit. We're suddenly mm -hmm. screening people with a right. means that may not flatter them in the best light. Not to mention at the moment in somewhere like the UK, it's so expensive to go to university. The only people going to university now are people that need to get degrees for jobs. Whereas yeah. back in the day, you'd go socialize, move away from home for a few years and get your end away on three nights a week. I so do think that it's a problem that people don't use university in order to better themselves themselves uh like educationally I, i'm very much a supporter of a person who wants to get a degree in philosophy and to understand the world in a better case now obviously it, it's not you know as financially lucrative and it's not like beneficial in the same way but i think that people understanding that that's a good thing uh are you still using dslr oh yeah yeah i've used dslr i've used this camera for like what five years uh it was the same one that Recful had and whenever i saw him and I was like, yeah, he looks good on that camera. And like Mitch was on the camera too. And I'm like, oh, I, I know these guys in real life. And so it's like, it looks good for them. So like, I'm just going to use what he uses.
But even people at university aren't socialising in the way they were supposed to because their parents don't want to spend £10,000 a year to send their kid away to yeah. uni for them to be getting pissed three nights a week. That's what university was back in the day. Yeah. So not only are we seeing degrading relationships with food, rates of orthorexia going up, not are we only seeing social media making people feel depressed about the fact they don't have a six pack, we're now seeing people that get depressed because they can't find a decent partner or someone to go on a date with because they're relying wholly on social media apps that are largely flawed to find a partner. It's very important. And they've also distorted people's perception of what's normal. Like, there's a lot of, uh, for example, like, there's plenty of guys, ugly guys, that have ugly girlfriends. It happens all the time. I see it constantly. But the difference is that there are some guys that think that they, like, th this guy is like a four. And he is not a four because, like, he has a medical deformity. He is a four because his favorite food is Cheetos and that's his only food. And he doesn't shower. And so, like, basically, the guy looks like shit, and he's mad that there are girls that are at gyms that don't want to date him. That's what happens. Proactive, in person. It's a distorted a view. Talent. Which brings me on to number four, anabolic steroids. Ooh. Alan Richardson portrays the character in Reacher, and I like Alan Richardson. I think he's a dreamy bloke. I watched oh. the first two episodes, and let me tell you this. I could not stop looking at his muscles and he's a his big hairline. Dude. You seen Jack Reacher? Not seen him. No, he is? Do you fuck, well, what do you do with your life? Crypto, you fucking waste, man. <laughs> this guy's 40, he's jacked, and he's got a yep. perfect hairline. So I'm like, look, I know you're getting a bit testy with the old uh -huh. So how are you keeping that immaculate hairline whilst running tests? How is this fair? He's been an actor for like 10 years, and this guy is top percentile genetics. But the second this guy goes on a few hundred milligrams of test a week, boom! Men's health on the front cover. What does that say? That you can be an elite man looking a great way. The guy's over, mm -hmm. the guy's like six foot two, very good looking, yeah. immaculate, but stick the guy on a bit of test, men's health go, now we are ready to have you uh -huh. to depict what fitness is to the people. Let me get right. the cover out. That guy. And this is the thing, it says, fit at any age, more muscle. Fit at any age, right. For more energy in every decade of your life, jacked Reacher finally gets huge. You got young dudes looking at this guy, as aspiration, you're in the gym slaying it day in, day out, trying to be the best version of yourself. And you've got a living, breathing encapsulation that if you were to just add testosterone to your life and pin yourself forever, yeah. your career could take off. <sighs> nice one, men's health. As if you weren't plebs before putting unaspirable physiques. Because well, you're- This is just the way guys are, right? And like, this is the same thing that girls, that girls have, right? Where like girls don't understand the amount of like post-production that goes into photos and the amount of different ways that like girls have to make themselves look like they don't look in real life. It's extremely like, it's a massive difference, right? It's huge. But like guys have the same thing. You're the, the issue men's health. You literally take the top percentile of what you call men that haven't eaten in a while and you put them on the front cover of your magazine. Well, and it's also like, the truth is that most people aren't gonna look like Jack Reacher anyway. Like he's already a really good looking guy. He's a big dude on his own. And then so if he takes this stuff, it's going to be like a multiplier effect for that. There it is. There are real great men that don't have six packs. There are real men in great bids of health that don't have model physiques. Sure. I just hate what your magazine is about. Six minute ab routines. Hey, try this exercise. There's, there's no yeah. periodization, no education. Because if people actually understood the principles, they wouldn't read your shite. Oh, mm -hmm. who's currently on cycle? Let's get a picture of him on the front cover. Plebs. Come on, bro. The number five, the availability bias. And I know I've covered this in a few videos before. Yeah, he's definitely right about this. That like, you know, yeah, you see some massive dude like that and people think they can go to the gym and look the same way. But in essence, the information that's available to us makes us paint mm -hmm. a reality of the world, not really how it is. For instance, I'm here literally a few hundred meters away from the sea in Australia. Every time I go out and swim, my mind does the same thing as you going sharks, but I'm way more likely to drown. Bondi Rescue made a whole TV show about people drowning at the beach, not shark attacks. But every time there's a shark attack, everyone knows about it. Every time there's a drowning, no one cares. Well, because the sharks are crazy. Like, you ever seen a shark? Who cares about some idiot that can't swim? <laughs> but a shark, bro? Like, you ever seen a shark? Like, what the fuck? Literally walk down yeah, to Bondi Beach about and that. watch people walk into the ocean fully clothed with jeans on and get sucked into a rip because the problem is I'm British. I can name five different species of shark, but I still can't spot the rip, which is where the water goes out because I can look at the waves. And the thing is, say you're going for a little swim, like, oh, nice waves, nice waves. Oh, there's a little gap where there's no waves. Rip, swim in, out your depth, dead. Ooh. It's the same as the lottery. You, you spend enough, this is you. This is you, mate. Crypto, mate. 
No one knows a lottery winner, but they see one on TV. So they go, oh my God, I need to do the lottery. Then and then do they it. don't just give them the money. They, they get the person to come on TV, give them the mm -hmm. massive check. Get out there, look at Trevor. Look at fat Trevor. He won 10 million, this could be you. They throw it in your face to make you feel like it could happen when statistically it really can't. The same as you with your crypto. Well, people are just stupid with gambling. And I think that the reason where this comes from is that that should be me or that could be me. I think it comes from a place of narcissism. And I think that like social media and the amount of fixation that people can have around talking about and thinking about themselves has completely rotted their brain to the extent that people's entire existence is totally self-referential and it's all about themselves. So they think that they're special. They think that they're the one that's going to win the lottery because their whole world revolves around them entirely and they don't even have any other interests. Yeah, main character syndrome. Exactly. Yeah, they think that it should happen to them. It's extremely common. You truly. It's also that people don't understand statistics or math anymore, too. So people are uneducated in the way that the numbers work. And so they think, well, it's a 50 50. I just win or I don't, right? I mean, you just got to, you get enough of them and you're eventually going to win, right? I mean, you've got to win at a certain point. Believe that crypto is your way out because you only subscribe to the people that have done well with crypto because yeah, the exactly. tens of thousands and millions of people that lost huge amounts of money in crypto remain silent. Which paints this is the uh, that's what happens with streaming too. Streaming's like a huge uh, example of that where like people see again they see like a really popular streamer doing well and they think that they're you know the same as that streamer and they think well okay well I'm going to be able to do that same thing myself and then they try and do it and it ruins their life. Yeah, there's a survivorship bias for that. Because, like, nobody's going to talk about, yeah, I streamed for two years and I didn't get anywhere. The reality of the world that isn't true. But every time you feel depressed about your stance on crypto, there yeah. you go and delve into looking for more information to back up your existence so you can feel like crypto is a smart investment. That uh -huh. check they use on TV doesn't even work. They go to the bank and the bank's them to piss off. <sighs> yeah. and the only thing worse than social media of how it's messing up, how we see the world and everything within it, is the current state of misinformation on podcasts. If you want to understand the oh boy. downfall of modern podcasts, then you'll have to watch the video I made about it right yeah. here. If you've already seen that video, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. A common reoccurring yeah, thing you'll hear right from old people that. is the constant Give me a comparisons second. of what we... A common reoccurring Just thing you'll hear from Sorry. old people... There we go. I bet you... Um, I think he's right about all this stuff. I do. And I think that also, like, guys having, like, body image problems isn't talked about as much as girls, because girls have, like, more body image problems. But girls have more, but that doesn't mean that guys don't have any. I think that there's a lot of guys that hate the way that they look and they want to change it as much as they can. So get jacked. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. And uh, my girl says I have body dys dysmorphia. I mean, I don't. There are some things like whenever I was a kid, I wouldn't like uh, I would wear a shirt in the pool whenever I was younger, like, you know, uh, 14, like 12 or something like that. Somewhere around there, I would because I didn't like the way that I looked. And like, uh, that's just, that's just how it is. And I'm sure that there's girls that feel that way too. Absolutely. But they're not, they don't have a monopoly on this problem. Like men also have this problem as well. And it's a big problem. So what ends up happening is that people see, I think Jack Reacher is definitely like a perfect example of this, right? They see a guy like Jack Reacher. I mean, it's a, that's a really big fucking guy. Like, most people, even if they work out all the time, they're not going to look like that. That's just how it is. It's just not going to happen. So, yeah, we ever see a Jack Dasman? Yeah, we'll see what happened. Uh, he's also 6'5". Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, you're not going to be 6'5". Like, it's not going to happen, man. The issue is that girls, uh, too, high confidence will not settle for men that aren't. Well, yeah, but there's a lot of guys that put no effort into their appearance or lifestyle and then they expect to get a girl who does. Like, that's really also the issue. And this is, I think, social media distorts people's expectations. Like, everybody thinks that they deserve this, like, really hot, super cute girlfriend that's in perfect shape. But then if, you know, they don't go to the gym and all they do is eat McDonald's every day. We do? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> True king. And, uh, yeah... Uh, she doesn't want you. Uh, you're alive. You're with your life. Uh, your worth is not defined by a woman wanting you. Yeah, I wish more guys thought that. You can look like the best version of you. You don't have to look like Jack Reacher. Yeah, definitely. But like, it's also naive to think that you can get anywhere close to that with most people's genetics, especially without having, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? Like doing steroids or doing something like testosterone, right? That's the issue.
Yeah, how can you be 6'5"? Yeah, it's, it's hard to be 6'5", right? Maybe if you do like 100 pull-ups, you'll be 6'5". Just good hygiene goes a long way. Yeah, no doubt. I think that like, uh, this is actually crazy, but I think it's like really true and it's what I've noticed a lot is that there was like a video of this like really stupid, annoying pickup artist guy, but he said one thing that was like insanely fucking smart and I, it stuck with me. It was a Channel 5 video. And this guy said, you know, does dick size or height matter? And then the pickup artist guy said, yeah, it does if you think it does. And I think that's what happens, is that people feel like, you know, this matters a lot, and then it changes completely the way that they behave because they think that they have something that's against them. I think there was, like, a study uh, with, like, um, like, another example of this. I'm probably getting this kind of wrong. Oh, let me link the video too while I think about it. Uh, is that there was a study where women had a scar painted on their face and they went into an interview and the women who had the scar painted on their face perceived that the interviewer treated them differently because of the scar that was on their face, even though the makeup artist that put the makeup on the person actually removed the scar at the end, but the person who was in the interview didn't know that. So, like, you create a confirmation bias around a perception of the world that you have. If you go into it thinking that you're going to have a problem, you probably will.